What's going on everybody? And in this week's lesson, we're gonna talk about one of my biggest pet peeves, and that is the word diet, right? So one of the first things we can do to kind of escape the power chord realm is to start playing essentially major and minor thirds, right? So I can go. Now, rather than playing straight up power chords like that, I can get this sound. Right? Adds a little more color, adds a little more flavor, a little more flair, and it kind of, again, gives you a new palette to add to your power chord repertoire. Now, again, one of the biggest pet peeves that I have is that I see guitar magazines, even your favorite YouTube guitar teachers, use the word dyad. Now, that's a play off of the word triad. All of our chords are basically in Western harmony are based off of triads, three notes, hence the triad. So I guess naturally they wanna call chords with two notes, dyads, and honestly, that's just stupid. What musical information does the word dyad convey to you? Nothing, absolutely nothing, right? So when we do these, these little chords, we're actually playing major and minor thirds, which is a type of interval. But again, our triads are built by stacking thirds. So when we play major and minor thirds, well, guess what we are doing? We are playing major and minor chords, all right? So if I say to you, hey, play me a dyad, again, there's no musical information there. But if I say, hey, play me a minor third off of D, I know exactly what to do. I know the exact sound that I'm gonna get, all right? So when we jump in, I am gonna drop detuning for this lesson, and down in the description below, you can find a links to any of the tabs that are going on. And I thought this would be a really good idea, a really good time to kind of go over some scales and some chords and some intervals here, all right? So we are gonna be looking at essentially D minor, right? D is the fifth fret of our fifth string, our A string. And we can play a minor scale. And then we have that nice low, a low D to support that. So again, if you don't know the sound of the minor scale, well, here's a great chance to explore it, it's five, seven, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, 17. Right? And you can let that low D drone over everything to really give you that sound of D minor. It works out really well. So anyway, back to the power chord, major minor thirds, one of the most you know, the first step we play in rock and metal guitar, and you know, thanks Megadeth, is you know, we can escape the realm of power chords. With changing those power chords, we can get a different color, different style, different kind of sound, but it's still playing the same thing. Basically, we're just adding some harmony. Is that we can flip these upside down and we can get major and minor thirds. Now that we've already established where the scale is, um, we can establish where which ones are minor and which ones are major, okay? So if I put my ring finger on five of our root note, and then I play my first finger on three of the next string, well that, is a minor third. And we only need two notes to imply harmony, right? I can take, I can play a full triad, get the whole D minor chord, but if I take away the fifth, which is just the power chord note, and as we know, and if we don't, we now know that a power chord is neither major or minor. It has no chord quality whatsoever. It's just thick and powerful, hence the nickname power chords, right? But if I put that minor third in there, I instantly have a D minor chord, all right? That's why I think dyads are just silly. The word dyad doesn't give me any musical information whatsoever, all right? So this shape on the guitar, kind of an upside down power chord, 
right, is a minor third. Anytime I do that, I'm playing minor chords, all right? So next to that, we have major chords. I come down to the third fret, and I play three, two, the smaller diagonal chord. Now, that is a major chord chord. So as we know, we can go up the scale and put a chord on every one of those. So instead of putting a bar chord on every one of these, we're just going to play major or minor thirds and imply that chordal harmony, right? So I have D minor, I have E minor. Now technically, if we were to expand the triad here, D minor has this B flat in there. That's going to give me a diminished chord, but diminished chords are built on stacking minor thirds on top of each other. So moving on, we have that E minor. If I go to eight, this is now in the parent major key, right? The relative major key. We're not going to get into that in this particular lesson, but the eighth fret note would be major third. So I'm going to play the adjacent smaller diagonal shape. So we have minor. If we go up the chord scale of a major scale, we have G minor, A minor, B flat major, C major, and here's our D minor. And then we can change the power chords when we want to get maybe more aggressive or thicker or something like that. We don't want that major and minor quality. And they are great for riffs. They are great for identifying and learning chords as well as your chord scale on the guitar. And what's really great about these shapes is that they don't have to just stay here. On these strings, they're movable, right? Now, one of the things about the guitar that makes it special is that the tuning between the third string and the second string is different. Right? So every shape, every chord I play is moved up by one fret on that second string. For example, if I want to play a power chord, the seventh fret of the G string is D. If I wanted to play a power chord, I'm not going to play it. I could make a power chord shape, but I'm going to get that ugly or beautiful tritone. Notice you never call tritones dyads. It's always a tritone. So, based on the tuning, the 9 has to go up to 10. So I get a slightly new shape. Same thing with the thirds, both major and minor. This shape is now here, and this shape is now here. So if I play my D minor scale... Oops, sorry. Well, the same shapes that we did are going to apply there. Minor... Minor, major, minor, minor, major. And playing those on the higher strings really can lead to some really cool, clean parts. All right, so there you go. You know, stop using the word dyad. Learn that they are now major and minor chords and apply those to your riffs. I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys dig that. And as always, let me know what you come up with. So until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.